It's the height of the Cold War. The space race has already started. And the Soviet Union has launched the world's first satellite, Sputnik. Sputnik was launched on a rocket, and people understood that if the Soviet Union had the capability to launch things into space, that there was likelihood that they also had the capability to launch warheads. There's no doubt that Sputnik 1 scared the Americans to death, and they suddenly realized they had to pull their finger out and get on it. Russia had got the first object into space, they got the first animal into space, and they got the first person into space. And the Americans, with their technical superiority, or so they thought, felt on the back foot. Kennedy decides the way to beat the Soviets is to put a man on the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I was thrilled to be part of fulfilling President John F. Kennedy's dream of man on the moon by the end of the decade. However, the moon was so far away, so remote. Was this really going to happen? When Kennedy made that beautiful speech, we choose to go to the moon. R remember that it, it, from an engineering perspective, we did not know how to do that. President Kennedy set out the challenge to do it in the 60s, and uh, everybody devoted their total life to doing that. Realizing Kennedy's dream within the decade isn't easy. It takes a concerted national effort, unparalleled in peacetime. The scale of Project Apollo is hard to really even conceive of. At the peak, over 400,000 people were involved. The program cost, at the time, $25 billion, which was more than the Manhattan Project, more than the Panama Canal. I think it was George H.W. Bush who said that it was the best investment since Leonardo da Vinci had been given a sketchbook. Um, he was, uh, and, and he's right. NASA's space program needs more than money. It needs men willing to risk their lives piloting highly experimental spacecraft. In 1961, Alan Shepard becomes the first American in space. In 1962, John Glenn orbits the Earth. By the time projects Mercury and Gemini give way to Apollo in the mid-60s, America's astronauts are superstars. Most of us came from the military, where we'd been uh, almost incognito, and all of a sudden you're celebrities. I thought these guys were the coolest guys walking the planet. You know, this is the time the Beatles were around. I thought they were cooler than the Beatles. I wouldn't call it a rock star quite, but uh, you could get a real swell head if you didn't watch out because you got a lot of attention. 